All right, this is just a quick recap of everything we've done in the review. This over here is the 8200 f2.82 ring, the push-pull 7210 f4 autofocus, 8200 f4 AIS, the Series E, and the f4.5 AI. This, of course, as the uh, review suggests, is my favorite. you got a nice tripod mount. Of course, you can rotate it. It's very handy. Use it as a grip instead of having to hold on to the, uh, the focusing grip all the time. You just hold it like that, or if you can squeeze your fingers in. I've seen some people do that. There's your limit switch, which comes in very handy. And you'll see why in a minute. It's a lot better than the push-pull version. The only downside is if you uh, stuff this lens in your bag and you pull it out and it's been switched on uh, by accident, and you don't notice it, it could ruin your shot. The other nice thing about this is, of course, the recessed uh, rear element. There's a lot of space in there. So you don't have to worry about scratching it up when you take it off, unlike my Series E and also the uh, 20 to 35, which I've got, which tends to stick out a bit. Of course, this is uh, the push pull version. Of course, when it's set to autofocus, you can keep turning this as much as you like and depending on the condition of uh, your lens you know if this is real sloppy that can get a little bit hairy of course this one's nicely dampened this here is the limit switch on this lens and it is a small little tiny ring so if you got big fingers it's a pain to move around like so there you go it is just a real awkward thing to use and then, of course, you've got the little locking uh, mechanism, but that's not a big deal. And there, from what I've understood and from what I've read uh, online, it's normal to have zoom creep on this lens. And it is one heavy lens, and it's awkward to hold. Uh, obviously, if you're going to be doing manual focusing, kind of like this, and if you've got a sloppy play, that's not going to be a good combination to have. That's why it's nice to have the two rings on the other one. And it uh, makes it a lot better. A lot easier to use, a lot easier to hold. This is the 72210 f4 autofocus. Very simple design. Just one uh, zoom ring, nothing else. And of course, you can manually focus it. But of course, like I said, when you've got it on the camera, you want to make sure that the uh, autofocus is disengaged on your camera. What do I mean by that? Well, take a look at this here. Like that. You want to disengage it. So, put the lens on here. Of course, it's not going to move. and. You can see there's a lot, it's difficult to move it, and you can probably hear the gears grinding in there. Turn it off, and it's much easier to auto to manual focus. So, that is, it's an awkward design, but it is a nice lens, and uh, if you're on a budget and you want autofocus, it's probably the one you get. This, of course, is the 8200 f4. It is a gorgeous lens. Um, it is heavy. Uh, it is a one-touch uh, push-pull zoom. Everything is on that one ring. And, of course, the uh, rear element here. It doesn't stick out as much as it does on some of the other lenses. Like this one. The Series E. This one here, it sticks out a fair amount. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, that's why you've got this raised ridge here to protect the, the rear element. That's one thing I don't like about this lens. And of course, it's uh, metal here, plastic here. Um, it's got metal threads. And it's, uh, it's a decent lens to use, however, it's uh, not as nice as this one. And uh, 
I do believe that the uh, 8200 F4 is actually at this time cheaper than the Series E. Don't ask me why, but that's what I found. This, of course, is the 8200 F4.5, 52mm uh, threads, which is nice, especially if you use smaller manual focus lenses. And, of course, the uh, square mount at the back. And that's kind of nice because it protects the rear element, because I think if that wasn't there, uh, it would probably stick out a bit. And there's potential for damaging it. And that's it. So which one uh, would I get? Well, it's just exactly what I've said on uh, in the review. This one, uh, if you can afford it. If not, then this one. And if you're really on a budget, then go with this one. But that's only if you want autofocus. If uh, autofocus isn't your thing, go with this one. This one's okay. However, the construction build, you know, it's got plastic parts. Uh, I'd stay away from that. This one here is okay if you don't mind bokeh that looks like from it comes from the 50s, 60s, or 70s, old school retro style. This one produces fairly decent bokeh, and it's compared. These two are fairly comparable. This one is uh, excellent, and so is this one. That's it. Thanks.